Hello you tens and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's lesson we're actually starting our next topic. We're looking at this topic of properties of geometric figures and what this topic involves is looking at the angles um, in our different shapes and also different um, different um, I guess uh, types of lines and what we want to be able to do is to find uh, missing angles in particular. So for today's lesson what we were doing is a bit of a review of stuff that we've actually looked at all the way back from year 8 all the way up until now. So today we're reviewing angles on parallel lines. So uh, what we want to be able to do is to review angle relationships on parallel lines uh, and we want to be able to recall the types of angles on parallel lines and find missing angles using ang oh, use, find missing angles using angle relationships on parallel lines. So let's go th get through this. So the first thing we need to talk about is a few quick definitions, two things. So here, there's two types of angles we need to be aware of. Um, these are just a few definitions we need to know. The first one is complementary angles. So if you ever see the word complementary in terms of angles, that just means that you've got two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So if two things are complementary, they add up to 90 degrees. The second definition is supplementary. Now supplementary just means that the two angles add up to 180. So those are two definitions, complementary and supplementary. Those are just terms we need to know. Now one application of in particular supplementary angles is if you've got angles on a straight line. Now if you have, ever have a straight line and you've got two angles on that particular line, so let's say there's in our diagram here we've got angle A over here in the pink and angle B over here in the uh, blue, what we notice here is that when we have those angles on a straight line they add up to 180. So here I have those two angles, they need to add up to 180 degrees. So whenever you see angles on a straight line, they add up to 180 degrees. And that's what we're going to be applying in later on as well. Okay, in today's lesson, we're actually looking at parallel lines. And there's a few angle relationships we need to know. So there's four in particular. Three of them have to do with parallel lines. And the last one we kind of just include in there because you'll see them quite often when we're dealing with um, parallel lines. Now, in all these diagrams, what we have is a set of parallel lines. So here we've got two, two lines which are parallel. And now parallel just means lines that don't touch. We talked about this in linear, linear relationships when we were talking about um, two lines that don't touch. And that meant that the gradient was the same. Here in angle relationships, there's still lines that don't touch. Um, and so for, in all these diagrams, the way that we show that two lines don't touch is this, red, this arrow over here. That tells me that my lines do not touch and they're parallel. Now additionally, we have, along with our two parallel lines, if I can erase this neatly, oh, there we go, we've got this line that cuts through it. Now this line, we call this a transversal. So a line that cuts through it, we call it a transversal, and it ends up creating a whole bunch of angles on our, sh on our pair of parallel lines. So for example, we have got an angle here, we've got an angle here, angle here, angle here, angle here, angle here, angle here, angle here. So we've got eight angles all together and what we want to be able to identify is particular relationships that we notice between those angles. So the first one is called our corresponding angles. Now corresponding angles, and you might remember this from last year as well, we talked, we, I gave them the name F angle. The reason why is because the corresponding angles, they are these ones here, this angle over here and this angle over here. So if you have a look at our parallel lines, they kind of have the same spot. They have the corresponding spot on the opposite parallel line in, in terms of that transversal. Now what we need to know is that these angles are equal. So if I know the value of one of these, so for example, if I know that this is 110 degrees, that tells me that this angle over here is 110 degrees as well. And the reason why we call them, I call them an F angle is because if you have a look at that shape that we can form with the transversal and the parts of the parallel lines that it, in, um, that kind of encloses those angles, it kind of makes this F shape. So here, the first uh, set of uh, angle relationships on parallel lines is our corresponding angles. Corresponding angles make that F shape and they are equal. Okay, the next one is an alternate angle. Now the alternate angle are these two angles over here. And if you have a look at the angle, the lines and the, uh, which enclose our angles, we notice here it's this line here, down to here and down to here. So it kind of looks like a Z shape. And once again, just like our corresponding angles, our Z angles, our alternate angles are equal as well. Okay, so that's the second one. So the first one was corresponding, they make that F shape. The second one was alternate, they make that Z shape. Now the third one is co-interior. Now co-interior are these two angles over here. And I'm gonna color them in different shades. So here this one's gonna be green, uh, red, and this one's gonna be green. 
And so notice here, they make this C shape. So let me put this in blue. They make this C shape. It's kind of like an angular C. And here, unlike the other two, they are not equal. They are actually supplementary. So that means that they add up to 180. So here, if I've got these two angles, if I call them A and B, when I add up A and B, so A plus B, that will give me 180. So correspond uh, co-interior angles, they make that C shape and they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, and the last one that we're going to include here, which isn't actually, doesn't have to necessarily be on parallel lines, but we just include it anyway, is our vertically opposite angles. Now, vertically opposite angles are whenever you see a cross shape. So here, whenever you see this X like this, the two angles which are opposite each other on these crosses, those two are equal. If you see this particular pattern, that is vertically opposite angles. And so vertically opposite angles are equal. So those are the four angle relationships we're going to be working with for the to find our missing angles here. Corresponding, which makes the F shape. Alternate, which makes that Z shape. Um, Co-interior, which makes that um, C shape. And vertically opposite, which have that cross shape. Now, the thing that we need to note is that co-interior angles is the only one which is unlike the others. They aren't equal. The angles aren't equal. They actually add up to 180. They are supplementary. So let's actually have a go in an example where we need to apply these angle relationships to find missing angles. So finding missing angles. The way that we do this, to find missing angles on parallel line, identify the type of angle relationship based on the shape. So have a look at what type of shape you have based on your diagram. Does it match which kind of angle relationship does it match up with based on what we have? Okay, so let's have a look at this example here. Example one find the value of the missing angles in the following diagram, including your reasoning. Now, if they ask you to include your reasoning, what you just want to do is include brackets and identify, so name what type of angle relationship it is. Is it alternate? Is it co, co interior? Is it corresponding? Is it a vertically opposite angle? So let's have a look at this diagram. Here in this diagram, we get given this 110 degrees in the top left, and we have two missing angles, A and B. So let's start off with A. Now, if you have a look at where A is and where that 110 degrees is, well, it's this angle and this angle, and you notice between them, they actually have this cross shape, and they're on opposite sides of that cross. So if you have a look at my four angle types, which one does it match up with? Well, they're not corresponding. They're not alternate. They're not in those Z in that Z shape. Z shape. They're not co-interior. They're not in that C shape. They actually have that vertically opposite pattern. They're kind of opposite each other in that intersection. So here I'm going to write. Well, vertically opposite angles are equal. So I'm going to say that 100 um, A is equal to 110. And my reasoning is that they're vertically opposite angles. So that's my first one here. A is equal to 110 because they are vertically opposite angles. Okay, let's have a look at B now. Now, if you have a look at where B is and have a look at that 110, is there any angle relationship between 110 and B? Well, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be one yet because here, if I was to look at the corresponding angle, well, B is in this little angle here. And so in order for me to make that F shape, I need to have this angle over here. So this angle would be B. That's not where 110 is, unfortunately. So that isn't going to be what my angle is. If I wanted my co, uh, if I wanted my alternate angle, I would need that Z shape. So here I've got this part here, and I'll also need this part here to get that Z shape. So here B would have to be here. But unfortunately, we don't have that either. Hmm. So what we need to actually do is work with the remaining ones that we, remaining one that we have. Well, we don't have a vertically opposite angle either. There's no information down here either. So if you have a look here, we've actually got this C shape. So A and B actually make that C shape, which is that co-interior angle. So what I can write here is that because they are co-interior, what I know is that when I add those two angles up together, they are going to be supplementary. They are going to add up to 180. So what we can write here is A plus B is going to equal to 180 degrees because they are co-interior angles. Let me write that properly. Co-interior angles. And so because the co-interior angles on our parallel lines, they're going to add up to 180. They're going to be su uh, supplementary angles. Okay. Now I know from the previous part that A is equal to 110. So I'm going to write this as B plus 110 is equal to 180. 
And so all we need to do now is to find the value of B, we just need to move this plus 110 over to the other side. And when I do that, I subtract it. So here I get B is equal to 180 minus 110. So that gives me 70. So uh, the value of B is 70 degrees. Okay, that's how we answer this first example. So once again, what we do is we identify what type of shape we have based on those four angle types. So here, do we have an F shape? Do we have a Z shape? Do we have a C shape? Or do we have that cross kind of shape? And then based on that, it tells us what type of angle relationship we have. Are they, e are they corresponding and equal? Are they alternate and equal? Are they vertically opposite and equal? And if it's not, if it's in that C shape, that means it's co-interior and they add up to 180. They're supplementary angles. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Now, the next example is a little bit trickier. So here we've got another set of parallel lines. So we've got this parallel line and this parallel line, and we've got a transversal, a line that cuts through it. Now, the only number that we get given in this diagram is this 150 over here. So from this 150, we actually need to figure out and work to get all of my other angles. So let's start off with A. So let's have a look at where A is. Now, A and 150, if you have a look, they are on this same line and where you've got this angle division, they've got this line which is broken up into A and 150. Now, what we know about angles is uh, if you have a straight line, angles on a straight line add up to 180. And so here, what I can write is, well, A plus that 150 is going to equal to 180 degrees because, oh, actually, let me, I can ignore that for now, because these are angles on a straight line. And that's my reasoning. So angles on a straight line. Okay. Now, just like we did in the previous example, when we had this plus 150 over here, if I move it to the other side, I need to subtract. And so here I'm going to have A is equal to 180 minus 150. And so 180 minus 150 will actually give me 30. And so that tells me that A is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so that's the first one here. A is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, let's work on to C. Now, uh, B. Now, B is all the way down here. Now, there's no direct relationship between B and 150, unfortunately. There's no angle relationship that connects those two. So B is over here. And so if you have a look, my corresponding angle would be this F shape over here. So this angle down here, we don't have that. Um, but if you think about your next one, well, I actually have my Z angle because A, uh, B and A make that Z shape. That's alternate angles. So here, what this tells me is that B is going to be equal to A because they are alternate angles. So because of that Z shape, they are going to be alternate angles and alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. And so from the first part, we know that A is equal to 30. And so that tells me that B is also equal to 30. Okay, that's the second part. We've done A and B. Let's move on to C now. Now, if you have a look at where C is, C is over here. And if you have a look, I'm just going to draw on that angle that it's up, made up of. Well, if you have a look at that 150, well, we can actually make an F shape with the 150 and C. And so what this tells me is that, okay, C is just going to equal to 150 degrees. Why is that the case? Well, F angles, that F shape is my corresponding angle. So here C is going to be equal to 150 because they are corresponding angles. So there we go. We've got A, B, and C down. So here we just need to identify that shape. We have a look at the shapes that we have up here and we try to identify what type of shape we have in our diagram. Okay, last one is D. Now, if you ever look at where D is and that 150, we actually have another example of an angled relationship that we have. D is over here, 150 is over here. And if you have a look, that makes that cross shape. And so here, these two angles are opposite each other on the cross. And that just tells me that D is going to equal to 150 again because they are vertically opposite angles. And there we go. That's how we can find missing angles on our parallel lines. For these questions, what we want to do is just be able to identify what type of shape we have with these angles. Is it a Z shape? Is it an F shape? Is it a C shape? Or is that cross shape? And based on that, we can identify what type of angle that is. If it's an F, it's corresponding angles and they're equal. If it's a Z, it's an alternate angle and that's also equal. If it's a C, 
their co-interior, which means that we need to, um, they add up to 180. And so we need to do a little bit of algebra to help us figure that out. And if it's that cross shape, it makes that vertically opposite angle. The only thing that we needed to add on in this question is to identify the fact that if you have two angles on a straight line for part A, so notice here, A and that 150, they are both on the same straight line and they have a line that connects them, line that they share. They're on the same line and angles on the straight line add up to 180 as well. And so that's what we need to do for that first part there. Okay, so that's how we can find missing angles on our parallel lines. This next part that we want to be able to do is actually identify whether or not two lines are parallel. Now, you might be able to look at a diagram and go, okay, these two lines are parallel because they look like they are, um, they, they're not going to touch each other. They look like they are parallel. But what we want to be able to do is actually mathematically show that two lines are parallel. So what we need to do here is we want to use the angle relationships on parallel lines and the shape once again. So if our two angles, it, they follow uh, one of those patterns um, on the, and what they follow one of those patterns that means that they are they makes our lines parallel so let's have a look at this first example so identify the following diagrams have parallel lines if you have a look here we've got two angles we've got this 120 over here and this other 120 over here now if you have a look at that shape that kind of looks like my z shape so these two are, are alternate angles now here my alternate angles are they equal well, I've got 120 here and 120 here, which means that they are equal. So my alternate angles are equal, which means that working backwards, that means my lines are parallel. So here, yes, lines are parallel. So these two lines, this one and this one are parallel as the alternate angles are equal. So here we work backwards. If our alternate angles are equal, that means that they are, um, the lines are parallel. If they're not equal, that means they aren't. And that similarly applies for corresponding angles. So let's say, for example, if they gave me this angle up here as 120, well, that makes a F shape with my um, 120 down there. And so that means that they are corresponding angles. If your corresponding angles are also equal, well, that just means that we've got parallel lines as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Now here, for this example, we've got 120 and 50. Now if you look at the shape that they make, well, they kind of make a C shape. So C, C shaped angles are co-interior. So if we wanna show that these two lines are parallel, so in particular, we wanna show that this line is parallel and this line is, these two lines are parallel, then our co-interior angles need to add up to uh, 180. So let's have a look at what these two angles add up to. 120 plus 50. 120 plus 150 gives me 170. Hmm. Well, 170 isn't 180 degrees. So what this tells me is that these two lines are not parallel. So here, no, the lines are not parallel. As the co-interior angles are not supplementary. So because they don't add up to 180, that tells me that these two lines are not parallel. And that's it. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. Let's do a quick recap of what we looked at in today's lesson. In today's lesson, we talked about parallel lines. And so here we talked about these four, ang um, four particular ang uh, angle relationships that we have on our parallel lines. Corresponding angles that look like Fs, and they are equal. So corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal. Alternate angles, which make that Z shape on our parallel lines, which are also equal. Our co-interior angles, which make it C shape, which means that they are um, supplementary, which means that they add up to 180. And then we also looked at vertically opposite angles, which make that cross shape, and they're on opposite sides of the cross. Now, when we are trying to find missing angles on our parallel lines, what we need to do is identify what type of shape we have. Do we have one of the F shape, the Z shape, the C shape, or that cross shape and opposite angles on either side? If we have any one of those particular shapes, what we can do is go, okay, cool. We can just say that they're equal or um, supplementary. And so from there, we can actually find our missing angles. So that's it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message via email or on Google Classroom, and I'm more than happy to try and help you. But as always, year 10s, I hope you guys are staying safe wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.